Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you all how to uh, do projection texturing using Adobe Photoshop. And we'll start by creating an object in Autodesk Maya and then we'll export it as an OBJ file and import it into Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a polyplane and we're going to keep this really uh, simple in case you the grid. We're going to keep this as simple as possible. So uh, the, the reason I'm choosing a polyplane, let's just do 20, 20, 20, um, is because it's already fully unwrapped for us and it's unwrapped basically perfectly. So as long as you scale this, um, you could even keep it as the original size, it doesn't matter. Um, I just make it larger so it's easier for everyone to see. That um, once you scale this and you scale it proportionately so every number will be the same your UVs are going to be perfect no matter what so let me go ahead and show you um, so I just created a polyplane poly, polygon plane create a polygonal plane on the grid and then I just changed my scale X Y and Z to 20 20 and 20 so I'm going to switch to a saved layout purse UV editor and I'm just going to toggle this on and off so you can see uh, this is showing uh, the UVs here and uh, one of the things you'll notice is that it fits the one-to-one -one, uh, ratio in here in the UV editor because it's just a square and it fills up this square perfectly um, so the UVs are already done and we don't really need to export them uh, as we did in previous labs um, you can if you'd like but I already know that it's going to be perfectly set um, in the square here so we'll just skip that step for this time. So I need to be able to export this object. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go first into my Windows, Settings, Preferences, and Plugin Manager. Windows, Settings, Preferences, and Plugin Manager. Now from here, I'm going to scroll down. It's in alphabetical order. So you'll see this objexport.mll just click loaded and auto load then click refresh and then click close so now um, I always find it best when I'm trying to export an object just to click my little arrow tool here then select the object and then I'm gonna do file export selection in this case you could do export all but um, just because I'm only whenever I do this trick I usually only do one object so I'm gonna do export selection and then I'm going to locate where I'm going to save it to and I'll show you here in just a moment and okay so I'm going to put it in my modules week 6 here and then go ahead and change I'm just gonna auto save it directly over this projection underscore texture plane and I'm gonna just make sure my file type I'm just gonna scroll down and find OBJ so OBJ export alright and then everything here should be fine uh, you shouldn't have to change anything and then just go ahead and click export selection and I'm gonna click yes on this and now from here I'm gonna go into Photoshop and I'm going to do, uh, before I even open the file, I'm going to do, an, uh, I want to show you something really quickly, because in case this doesn't work for you, um, go to Edit, Preferences, and just do General. And that's Edit, Preferences, and then General. So in here, um, depending on how uh, Photoshop set up your um, sort of default settings, uh, you'll be unable to import a 3D object unless you change some of these settings. So um, we're not going to go to 3D yet, but you'll notice if if I do click on this and you click on it on your own screen on your own computer, if this is all grayed out, that means you probably won't be able to import a 3D object. There's a way to fix that. So go to Performance, and you'll see over here Graphics Processor Settings. Just go ahead and click Use Graphics Processor. Just click that on. 
and once you click that on in your 3D this should all be able to be selected again um, so you're good to go and then just go ahead and click OK now I can open up a 3D object so I'm gonna go to file open and I'm just gonna import or open not the projection texture plane.mtl that'll automatically come up that's like a shading group that kind of follows this um, uh, object when exported I just need the projection texture plane.obj so I'm just gonna click on that and click open and then I'm gonna change this width and height to 20 48 and 20 48 yours might be set up differently um, but this is a pretty good size and then everything else I'll leave the same um, you can obviously change your 3d units from millimeters centimeters yada 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 but this is totally fine and then I'm gonna go ahead and just click import or okay now you may get a, a pop-up box that says something like um, come on there it goes you get may get a pop-up box that says something like um, we're going to create a new 3d layer would you like to create new 3d layer uh, yada 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 just click OK yes you want to create a 3d layer um, and then it'll open like this now with my uh, move tool selected I want to show you how to navigate in the scene so you kinda don't see anything and that's because the polyplane is just laying flat so it's perfectly horizontal here you'll have this little window up here this is what it looks like from a top view so you can actually see the object here we're not going to be too concerned with this top little window here however we are going to be working in here so um, the next thing I want to do is just show you how to use these tools so right now in 3d mode it's I'm hoping it'll come up this one's roll the 3d I think this one's just rotate orbit the 3d camera roll the 3d camera pan slide and zoom so with the orbit tool on I'm just gonna left click so the the buttons are a little bit different in here so I'm just gonna left click and rotate around and you're gonna see that this object is in here now you'll see this little sort of shading stuff but that's just normal it's just how the lights are hitting it and how it's sort of displaying it for us so you can rotate around like so right you can use the roll camera and it will roll the camera you can use the pan I think this is the pan pan yep when we just pan around and I'm just using left click and this is slide this one I'm not the biggest fan of it's kinda weird for me to use and then also the zoom and the zoom will allow me to zoom in and out of my object the one I use uh, mostly is the orbit the uh, pan and the zoom those are kinda like uh, the three um, that we use in Maya the most too so anyway with that being said now we know how to navigate in this uh, 3d space the next thing I want to show you is over here under layers if you're in 3d just click on layers and in here you'll see textures diffuse initial shading group texture image based light yada yada right so I want to show you quickly what the UVs look like and how this actually kind of works so I'm going to double click on this initial shading default texture right here under diffuse under textures under my layer one which is the polyplane and just double click and you'll see it says 1024 by 1024 RGB 8 so that's 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels uh, red green blue at uh, 8 pixels per unit I believe or per inch whatever unit measurement they're using for this so I'm gonna double click on that and you're gonna see that this is my UVs now you'll see that it's also broken into triangles now if you remember um, in, in previous video uh, I believe it's somewhere in the before you begin I explain this under topology uh, what uh, 3d software sort of do with um, quads right um, what it does is it just 
breaks it down into two triangles and Photoshop does that by default when you import an object or just open an object uh, in um, Photoshop so you can kind of see what it is and this is your UV layout so this is literally the squares that we see on our uh, uh, whatchamacallit UV editor excuse me so now I can sort of toggle back and forth between these two and they're sort of they're basically linked to one another and sometimes they that link sort of breaks so if that does happen to you while you're working on it just exit out of it you know I don't need to save it or whatever and then I'll just go ahead and double click on it again and that'll sort of refresh the link so if that does happen to you um, when you're toggling back and forth between the two uh, files here basically um, all you have to do is close out of the uh, UV map and then just double click on it again and we'll get more into detail on that in just a moment so I'm gonna just close that for now and I wanna do something I'm just gonna go file open and I've got a texture here I got it from textures.com I just got a brick texture on there and I'm gonna click open so I wanna take this texture and I wanna project it onto my um, UV map on my polyplane. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to press Control A, that's select all, Control C for copy, and then I'm going to click back here and I'm just going to orbit over it a little bit and maybe have to pan some. So about here and let's pan up a little bit just to make it a little bit there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control V. And now you'll notice that my 3D options are locked because my uh, layer 2 here isn't a 3D layer, whereas my layer 1 is a 3D layer. You see the little cube on there? That means it's just basically telling you it's a 3D layer. And this is not. So this is just like a regular Photoshop layer. So I'm going to press Control T or Edit, Free Transform, and I'm just going to scale this to match my polyplane and I want to press enter now I want to project this down onto this object right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead over here and this is exactly how you'll project this image straight down onto this object I'm gonna press right click on my layer 2 and I'm gonna click merge down okay right click on your layer 2 and go merge down and it's gonna merge it down on here and now that I have my 3D options available, you'll see it merged directly down onto the mesh, and it is now a texture laying on the 3D object. So just because I have a little bit better lighting here, you can see it's directly on the object. Pretty neat, right? And you can do this for any shape. You can, if, if you import any model you want into Photoshop, you can texture like this. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on my initial default texture here and you'll see that it projected directly down right on layer one now the neat thing about this I'm gonna exit out of that is I'm gonna create a new layer in here now that I've got a new layer when I click back for a split second it should do a little swirly thing if if you can see there it goes um, just for a quick brief moment and now I've got an, another layer that I can work on so basically what that quick little swirly thing was doing the thinking uh, circle basically um, it was updating this file here so now it knows that it has a an extra layer to work with inside of its initial default texture so what I'm gonna do now is now that I've shown you how to project on here I'm gonna show you how to texture in here so I'm gonna do um, a text over it so I'm just gonna click my text tool and I'm gonna click and drag and make it I don't know 30 no maybe a hundred hundred were hundred was fine and I'm just gonna delete all this and I'm gonna type my name all right and just I don't know I'll make it there we go so I've got my name here 
and I'm going to just go ahead and drag it down. I don't know, somewhere, I don't know, like that. Somewhere in the middle, I guess. Um, and now I'm just going to click back just to show you. It's going to take a second to think. And now I've got my name on there. And I textured it in here, and it updated it right away, which is really neat. And this is super useful because you can see what your texture looks like while you work on it. It's a really great trick. Um, another thing I would like to show you, I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to create another layer. And in here, you can even rename these layers. So I'll name this Rick. And, oh, that's definitely misspelled. There we go. Okay. And in here on my layer two, I'm going to leave this blank for now. And I'm going to go back over here. It should take the little swirly thing. And if it's not working for whatever reason and it's not updating, just close out of this, right? You can just close out of this. Um, I'll click no. You don't have to save it. Unless you'd like to, um, if you did a lot of work in there and it didn't update this automatically, you might want to save it. Um, but I, I don't need to at the moment. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and double click, and you'll see it updates. Okay. Um, this used to the sort of break the linkage a lot more in the past, and I would constantly have to go back and double click. But in it, it's been updated quite a bit, so it works really, really well now. So now what I'm going to do is in my uh, projection texture plane object here, I just want to show you because I have another layer that you can actually, if I grab my brush tool and um, let's just make the brush a little bit bigger so we can see it better, I can go ahead and draw directly on this thing, which is super neat. And now if I go back over here, you'll see it updated it right away. Okay? So you can do really cool little things like that. Um, for now, I, I'm just going to delete that layer because I don't need it. Um, but I just wanted to show you, you can draw directly and paint directly on your uh, 3D object, which is a super useful trick. And the other thing I'm going to do is just to give this a little bit more... Um, sort of uh, look to it. I'm going to duplicate this layer and and I'm going to rasterize it. This is just a really quick way uh, to do it. I just select my brush tool and click on the layer. It's going to say this layer must be rasterized before proceeding. This text no longer will be editable, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to click OK. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can double, I'm going to hide the original one. I'm going to double click on this. You don't have to do this. I just thought I'd uh, show you real quick. And now I can do all types of cool little tricks to it. I can bevel emboss it so it looks like it's sort of uh, popping out a little bit. Um, ooh. Let's go like three. Oop. I just undid that really quickly. So I can run like a bevel emboss. And I can change all the little settings in here. I could do like a all types of stuff um, and outer glow if I wanted so it's glowing a little bit and I think that's kind of cool and I'll do white I'll change the color to white and eh, let's stick with the green the green kind of looks neat so I'll, I'll just do something like that and you can play around with all these things. You can do like a little inner shadow. You probably won't be able to see it as well because it's a black text um, and it's doing a black shadow. I could change it maybe to white. Might be able to see it a little bit better, but um, anyway, you can fiddle around with some of these if you'd like. You can. I could change the color on it and make it a... I don't know. White's fine. So there's a lot of stuff you can do. Um, drop shadow maybe. I don't know. But either way, you kind of get the idea. And I'm just going to click OK. And now I've got this glowing name here. And if you want to go back and change anything else on it, you just double click on the little 
layer here, just double click on the little image of it. And if you wanted to change anything else, you can uh, obviously do that. Let's see, spread, make it a little bit larger. And you can sort of play with these settings. And I'm just going to click OK. Anyway, I think that's just that's pretty good for this. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and go back here. And it should update. And now I've got my name in there. It's glowing. Uh, it's got text on there. And you can really do whatever you'd like. So now that I have got this object, I want to um, save out my image. All right. So now that I've got everything, it's just right. I love the way it looks. I'm ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and go into here. And now I'm going to do a file, save as. And I'm just going to bring this off to the side just for a second. And I'm going to save it. You'll notice actually first before I do that. Come on. Okay, there we go. So you'll notice first it saves it out as a .psb. We're not going to, you can save it. I, I mean, I recommend saving it out at least the one PSB file. Um, it's just a really large Photoshop format. But I'm going to save it out as a PSB. I'll save it out as a PSD. And I'll also save it out as a um, TGA. All right. So I'm going to just now bring this off to the side. And okay, one second. There it goes. So that's fine. So in here, I'm just going to go ahead and save it as a PSD, PSB first. And I'll save it as uh, uh, projection texture example. And then I'll click save. I don't want this to be full screen. OK. And I'll save it out that way. Click OK. And I'll also save it out as a, and I just press Control Shift S to save. I'll save it out as a PSD projection texture example. Save. And then over here it says Photoshop format, yada, yada, yada. Maximize compatibility. Click OK. And then I'll also save it oops, as a TGA. And I'll save it as 32 bits a pixel and click OK. So now that I've got that uh, complete, I'm going to go back in here and open up Maya. And I'm going to assign a new material. Hold right click on the object, assign new material. And I'm going to assign a blend. So the blend has that sort of shininess to it, right? And just make sure, OK. And in my blend settings here, I'm going to assign that. Ooh. And one thing I did wrong here is when I saved out my Targa file, I did not click. OK, good. I didn't have to on this one. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't have to click the alpha channels. But I'll save it again, 32 bits a pixel, and click OK. And now in here, I'm going to click on my little checkerboard here. It's going to come up with this, and I'm going to click on File. And then in here, I'm going to locate that file. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and locate this here, and I'm going to click open. So now that I've assigned that uh, image to this, why can't I see it? Really simple. If you remember, four wireframe, five shaded, and six shaded display with texture. And I'm going to just turn off the grid so we can see this a little bit better. And now you'll see that my object, I just projected a texture on here onto this object um, using Photoshop. And I used the 3D settings in Photoshop, which is really neat. So now that I've got that done, I want to go ahead and apply something called a normal map and also something called a specular map. Now a normal map is um, an illusion that uh, Maya can create using a specific type of texture that gives it the illusion of depth. And I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to do it. Photoshop has a pl uh, basically, I guess, a plugin for it or whatever. Um, and we can do it with just a couple clicks. All right. Uh, a normal map is also known as a uh, bump map. So I'm going to go into Photoshop again. And I don't need this, but I can obviously, yes, I'd like to save. And it's going to save it out as a PSD file, which is fine. And I'll just go ahead and projection texture plane save. Click OK. And you can always reopen this file now. So now that I've got this in here, what I want to do is I'm going to take all of these layers and I don't really need this one anymore, but I'll, I can keep it in here. And I've already saved out a previous version of this in case I want to go back and edit it. So I'm going to just go ahead and shift click all of these and I'm going to press control E to merge all. And I'm, let me see if there's a merge all in here. Um, I'm so quick with the keyboard uh, shortcuts in Maya or in Photoshop that I don't remember how to uh, find it the long way. Merge layers, control E, under layer, merge layers. So you can just go ahead, layer, merge layers. And now all those layers become one layer, and it just merges them all down. Similar to how we projected it down when we right clicked and hit merge down. So this just merged all of them. So with that uh, being said, now, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and I want to create a new layer right down here. And actually, I want to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to name this one. Double click on it. I'm going to name it Diffuse. This one's going to be my normal. And I'm going to create one more and call it specular okay so now I need to go ahead and create the uh, three maps these are the three maps that are really used uh, at a bare minimum for any video game or any 3d object that you see um, basically what the specular map does is it controls the light um, hitting the object so um, we'll be able to control the shine or sheen on it uh, much more so and then I'm also going to show you the normal map so the normal map is pretty cool I'll go ahead and show you that one first and how we do that is we go into filter and with my layer my normal map layer selected filter 3d and generate normal map filter 3d generate normal map click on that and you're going to see that this object pops up. It comes up in a sphere. You can change the object type down here. Let's just change it to a, uh, I don't know, a wine bottle. That's kind of a unique sort of, a soda can is basically a cylinder. But you'll see if I had a uh, an object in here, um, this is sort of what it would look like on the label. Right? So you can see even the name popping out. You can kind of see that, right? And that's just an illusion trick that it's creating. And you'll see it does it over here also. It creates this, uh, it, it makes it, it, it takes that entire uh, image and it solely bases it off of RGB colors 
red, green, blue, in order to get the uh, sort of illusion of depth, because that it, the the model will now have this illusion of it popping out, but it's not actually modeled onto the object. So it saves a lot of memory um, from using uh, too many polygons and things like that. And this is just a much easier way for the software to sort of read it. Um, this is a really common trick used in video games, um, and it's really extremely. Uh, it's used in film. It's used on any 3D object. Uh, it's a standard for today. So um, you can change the lighting and all that, but basically what I'm going to do is just click OK. And now in my layers, you'll see that I've got this here. You can play around with the sliders and stuff, but um, this is totally fine for this uh, example. So now that I've got this sort of... Uh, here on my I'm gonna hide it just for the moment and on my layer my specular layer what I'm gonna do is I'm going to need to uh, convert this image to just black and white and the way specular maps work is um, white on this or lighter is it's a basically on a grayscale so um, white would be really extremely shiny so like my the letters in my name should be extremely shiny, whereas the rest of it won't be as shiny. And you'll see here in just a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, Image, Adjustments, and I'm just going to go ahead and do Black and White, or Alt, Shift, Control, B. And I'm going to just click Auto and see what happens and click OK. And you can take a look at it, play around with these sliders and stuff, but this is totally fine. And I'm going to click OK. Right, and if you wanted to make it darker, lighter, and, and and things like that, you can go into image adjustments, and we can do brightness contrast. You can use legacy if you'd like. It it's just a different type. It it uh, different way to uh, Photoshop does. Um, don't have to. It's it's not a big deal. You can sort of get the same results. But I'm gonna bring down my brightness, and then uh, maybe bring up my contrast, and you'll notice when I bring this into Maya you'll see in between the brick layers it's gonna be a little bit shinier where the dark colors are gonna be really flat and not have as much shine and I'll just go ahead and click OK so I just brought my brightness down my contrast up and you'll see it's got a subtle little uh, and that's from the glow that I added to it but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK and that's pretty good so now I've got all these and now I need to save them out so here I'm just gonna you can do file save as and underscore normal and I'm gonna save this out as a TGA and I don't need to click the alpha channels and just click OK OK and then this one I'm gonna save out control shift s this one I'm gonna save out as a TGA and this one's going to be uh, do, 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 specular okay so now that I've got all those saved out I can also save this out as you know all maps okay so now if I want I can come back and you know play around with it so now it back into Maya I've got my object here under with my blin under diffuse I don't need to worry about diffuse because that goes under our color map here. Under specular, under specular color, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to first bring down my reflectivity, and I'll mess around with these other settings here in a second. But under specular color, I'm going to click the little checkerboard, and we're going to go to File. And now just go ahead and locate it just as you would any other one. So this one was here. I'm going to click open. You'll notice it shows up over here. And what that does is you'll see, can you see the shine on the on my name versus the rest of it? It doesn't have as much shine, right? So that was just the specular. And now for the big one, um, we're going to go down to bump mapping here. So bump mapping 
and normal map so bump map is basically under or, or normal map is under the bump map so basically what uh, a bump map is um, the difference between a bump map and a normal map right a bump map can only uh, display depth the illusion of depth from two different dimensions right from you know let's just say X and Y right it can only display depth on two dimensions whereas a normal map using RGB instead of just uh, a bump map also only uses black and white like the specular one specular map a normal map can display uh, depth from all three dimensions so um, if we were to rotate in here with a bump map you would not s notice uh, the depth changing in any direction it would just always be from one um, and if we use a normal map you would notice those differences because uh, of the RGB you can use three different color schemes on here so I'm gonna go to bump mapping and click the little checkerboard I'm gonna go ahead and click on file and in here go ahead and change use as instead of bump we're gonna change it to tangent space normals tangent space normals and then we can click here on file 3 and click on the folder and go to normal click open and now you should see a big uh, difference as far as depth goes and you can really tell on the uh, name there and as I rotate down you can start to see those crevices more and you'll see how it shadows more um, and if I were to adjust the lighting in here and we get to lighting in a later uh, later labs um, you'll notice that uh, that illusion of depth really portrays through um, and that's really everything I have for you on this lab so that's uh, projection texturing and also creating um, specular maps and normal maps and normal maps create this depth and specular maps control the shine so anyway thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah message me if you have any questions